Welcome to the next short paper session. My name is Marcel Ritter and I will present you visual analysis of point cloud neighborhoods via multiscale geometric measures. The work itself is a side product of the development of a line reconstruction algorithm from point clouds. As indicated below, you can see a point cloud on the left side and on the right hand side some multiscale feature images. I will present you how such images were generated. To describe local features of the point distribution, we employ weighted covariance. So from a set of points, we select the neighborhood. The neighborhood consists of a point of reference, the centroid C, and the neighbors PI. We compute direction vectors from the centroid to the neighbors and transform them to second order tensors using the dyadic product. They are distance weighted, meaning that closer points contribute more to the final result. All tensors are summed up and normalized. The final second order tensor or covariance matrix then describes the distribution of points around the centroid. Geometrically, it can be represented as an ellipsoid fitting the neighborhood. The second order tensor is now decomposed into eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The eigenvalues are used to compute the shape factors introduced by Westin. The eigenvalues, lambda i, are now used to compute three shape factors, the sphericity, cs, the planarity, cp, and the linearity, cl. They are all normalized by the sum of the eigenvalues and are thus lying in the interval 0 and 1. They form a barycentric coordinate system and describe the shape of the ellipsoid. So, for example, if the linearity is 1, this means that the fitting ellipsoid is elongated in one axis, meaning that points in the neighborhood lie on a perfect line. If points in the neighborhood are located on a surface, then the planarity becomes 1. And if they are distributed homogeneously in space, the sphericity will become 1. To each of the shape factors in the extremum, a color is associated. White for linear, green for spherical or homogeneous, and blue for planar. Yet, our shape factors only describe a single-scale neighborhood, thus we extend it to multi-scale. Similar to the work of Natale, we compute the shape factors over multiple scales. Instead of using the number of neighbors as a parameter, we use the radius. Suppose we have given a point cloud in form of a rectangle. Let's inspect the upper right corner. The black points are from the sampled rectangle. We select the centroid and let the radius grow. For each radius, we compute a second order tensor covariance. We can now illustrate the shape factors over the grown radius by using three graphs. The gray line represents the linearity, the blue line the planarity, and the green line the sphericity. So for the centroid, we can see that in a small neighborhood, the linearity is high as we are here on this linear region. And as soon as we reach the corner with the radius, the linearity goes down and the planarity goes up. Instead of using those graphs, we can use like a color map, mixing those three colors. So this light gray for again linearity and the blue for planarity and green for sphericity, which is zero in this case. We can now use those color maps to create a whole image. So for each point of the point cloud, we can now draw this color map bar such that the line parameter or point index represent the x-axis and the radius the y-axis. We can now find the geometrical features of the rectangle in this rotationally invariant multiscale graph. Like the small blue peaks are the corners and these light gray triangles represent the sides of the rectangle. Let's inspect some more point clouds using those images. Here, additionally, a circle, a crossing and a wave. The rectangle is still on top. On the right side, you also see the geometry with some added noise. For the circle, the multiscale neighborhood is the same for each point. You can see a 2D jitter noise at the low bandwidth in a blue color. The outline noise creates some fog at larger scales. A crossing in 2D has a similar planarity as a corner. Here, two more examples in 3D, adding sphericity to the plots. The noise is also in 3D, thus the noise band appears in green. For the helix, one can identify a small linear region becoming then non-linear. And for the corner 3D, the corner point can be identified for, with a very small sphericity. The lines have a linear border and the circles a non-linear border. We employed those multiscale feature images to visualize different parameter choices in the covariance. For example, to illustrate the effect of the weighting functions. Three weighting functions are presented here, a constant weighting, a quadratic weighting, and a Fermi-Dirac weighting function. The influence of the linearity is also visualized on the graph on the left. 
The position of the minimum of linearity and the smoothness of the linearity is different for each weighting function. The smoothest result with the Fermi rack and the smallest minimum for no weighting. The multiscale feature images are accordingly displayed on the right. This additionally allows to compare the information related to the close neighbors. When switching from constant to quadratic weighting, the plots become much more smooth, and even more so when we use the Fermi Dirac function. This may be beneficial when working algorithmically in the multiscale feature space. Now let's compare the influence of different centroids. Here the multiscale feature images when selecting directly a point of the neighborhood. When we employ a mean, the appearance changes. Let's inspect this linear region of the noisy rectangle. When we compare it with the result before, the distinction between linear and planar region is enhanced. Then, employing the geometric median instead of the mean, the planar and linear regions even become more prominent and noise is filtered out a bit better. Note that employing the smooth firm with the rug function reduced these occurring artifacts, which may result from the Weisfeld algorithm we implemented for the geometric median computation. Next, we compare our scale space visualization to the scale space images of Melado et al. They use the curvature based scale space derived from an algebraic sphere fit. In contrast, they can differentiate between convex and concave regions via curvature but they require normal vectors at the points. To compare, we use the computed eigenvectors of the covariance. Here we use the medium eigenvector for lines. For planes, one can use the minor eigenvector. The red and blue images on the right are the results by Melado's technique. Depending on the noise level, a different radius for a normal will be an optimal input. Here more difference between the methods are visualized on top ours and below Melado's method. Our method enables the distinction between linear, planar and spherical regions and thus also between 2D and 3D noise. 3D noise here in green and in blue and below there is no distinction. Our method provides better defined borders, as can be seen for example for the helix. Further, no normals are required for the computation, but no curvature information is included in our images. In Melade et al, red and blue coloring stands for positive and negative curvature. However, our method better highlights the linear regions in case of the 3D corner. Further note that the curvature-based method does not distinguish between the neighborhood being on the line or on the plane. Finally, some examples on real-world data of a LIDAR scan. Along line probes, multiscale images are visualized. First, a longer roof. Blue and planar is dominant. Second, on a bundle of cables. Linearity is dominant at two different scales, and a very small scale for a single cable and for the whole bundle. Third, along a line probe in the tree, where sphericity is dominant. At a very small scale, also linearity becomes apparent. To conclude, we presented a scale space visualization based on a weighted covariance by three shape factors. Point clouds and different parameters thereof were illustrated, for example, different centrids and weighting functions. It allows a local geometrical classification into linear, planar and homogeneous regions. Employing the geometric median resulted in clearer regions and borders. The fermi rack function generally created smoother results, which helped in the median computation. Note that the illustrations helped in parameter choices for a line reconstruction algorithm operating in scale space. Thus, the method may also be applicable to other algorithms operating the scale space of point clouds. In future, we will look at other implementations of the geometric median. Methods in Cohen and al. have better stability and better runtime. We will investigate if our method can be combined with Melados, for example, to provide normal vectors and to allow the distinction between lines and planes. Further, we will work on a GPU implementation for real-time geometric clustering. This research was funded through the Vice Rectorate of Research of the University of Innsbruck and it was carried out in the scope of the Doctoral School Computational Interdisciplinary Modeling. Thank you for your attention.